welcome to Life Passages, The Soul's Journey. I look forward to having you join us for life-changing events as they're uh, described to us by our guests and life-transforming experiences that we get to listen to and uh, maybe be kindled by in our own lives. We do our show Mondays, 9.30 p.m. It's a half-hour show, and Sundays, 3.30 p.m. Come join us for Life Passages, The Soul's Journey. And uh, recently, just in fact today, I did an interview with Virginia Morell, the author of the new book, Animal Wise, which has been already in its first year translated into nine different languages. It's sweeping the planet, helping us understand animals, their thoughts, their feelings, their consciousness. And then recently as well, I did an interview with Ani Williams about her work leading pilgrimages to France to sacred sites dedicated to Mary Magdalene, who along with two other Marys took refuge after the crucifixion of Christ and came to France. This is one of the cave areas where she is said to have resided. And so these are just a couple examples of the fascinating interviews that you'll encounter on Life Passages, The Soul's Journey. You can access it at rvtv.sou.edu, either live streaming at the times that it shows or on the archive. Come join us, and maybe your own life will be refreshed and renewed by some of the, what you encounter on Life Passages. Be well. You're watching Ramping Up Your English, an instructional support program for intermediate level English learners. We take a content-based approach to learning English. Our content today has to do with the science concepts of habitat and biomes. Our language objective is to use connecting phrases to describe an animal's habitat and to describe a biome by listing its characteristics. This is segment two of episode 52. Our current theme is animals. Before the break, we asked a question about biomes. Well, at its simplest definition, a biome is a region and its living things. To distinguish a biome from a habitat, it helps to remember that a biome may contain many different habitats. Let's look at deserts as an example. A desert biome is dry with sparse vegetation and animal life. Deserts are usually very hot during the day and very cold at night. Different animals may need different aspects of the desert in order to survive. A desert tortoise needs the shade of plants during the day, as well as soil it can burrow into in order to avoid the daytime heat. It gets most of its water from the vegetation it eats. Its hard shell provides a measure of shelter from many predators. Tortoises need only a small amount of space. These elements make up the habitat of desert tortoises. A coyote also seeks out shade. However, it must move about a large area, searching out animals to eat. Coyotes must be near a source of water to drink. An adult coyote in the desert has few predators from which to escape. It needs things in its habitat that a tortoise doesn't need, and the tortoise needs some things the coyote doesn't need. They both live in the desert but their habitats are slightly different. Now this chart by Enchanted Learning presents information about some land-based biomes. Looking at the top row, there's a description of a desert biome. Here we see some of the plants and animals commonly found in low deserts in North America. That's the desert you think of when you think of desert. They all live in the desert, but their habitat needs may be met in different ways in different areas of the desert. You can see the first animal is a bird called a roadrunner. Well, there really is such a bird, and I've seen one from a passenger train called the Sunset Limited. I've also seen the cartoon, and I'm sure you have, or maybe you have, about the roadrunner and the coyote. Well, you've seen two animals that live in the desert biome, if you've seen that, and you might feel sorry for the coyote. If you look at the third row, you'll see that it's tundra. Dry, cold, frozen soil, lichens and mosses for plants and animals that migrate, the tundra seems like a hard place for an animal to live. Well, Animals of the Tundra is a book written by 
Richard Vaughn, published by Celebration Press, it gives a great description of the tundra, the tundra biome, and the animals that live there. Now, those animals include the polar bear, lemming, snowy owl, musk ox, snowshoe hare, caribou, also the tundra wolf, walrus, weasel, and arctic tern. Now, if you like the cold tundra, you'll love the animals in this book, Polar Animals. It's from Flying Frog Press, designed by Jane Brett, written by Kathy Billings Leah Smith, and illustrated by Bob Bampton. And it's not just any book, it folds out. Watch this. So we have here, in the beginning, something about polar bears. And then, as we open it up, we see some information about puffins. And let's just see kind of how this book works, because that's the fun part of it. Because we have the Arctic fox that we're looking at right there. And if we flip that open, we end up with something very interesting. Because if you like flipping open a book, look at this one. This is all about, of course, this is a walrus. And, uh, and that's one of those animals. And then if you just flip that over, which is easier said than done sometimes, okay? Here's the other side of it. We see from south, uh, uh, the South Pole, we see penguins and we see seals over there. So it's a really fun book, you know, for, for flipping out and learning about the animals of the Arctic. It's called Polar Animals. So that's a book you might want to look into getting sometime. Uh, it might be at a library, it might be at a bookstore. There's also lots about animals. I'll, I'll post the information about it and the ISBN on my website, letscreate.org. Now, looking at this chart, again, we see a biome in which, in, uh, in which you live. Let me, let me make sure I'm saying that right. You might see, oh yeah, you might see a biome in which you live looking at this chart if it's a different one than we've shown so far. Now, for people who live in southern Oregon, you'll see several biomes that all meet in this region, from chaparral, coniferous forest, and some temperate deciduous forest, all these converge in the Siskiyou Mountains and the valleys that span the Coast Range and the Cascade Range. That diversity in biomes is what makes Southern Oregon and Northern California such an outstanding place to visit. Nature lovers find a home here, whether for a lifetime or a couple of weeks. Now, your connection to nature might be different where you live. One biome on this chart is the grassland in the United States. Now, I learned this as the name prairie, and I learned about a massive prairie known as the Great Plains. Well, other parts of the world have sprawling prairies known as the steppes in some areas, savanna, and in South America, the pampas. On the Great Plains, these bulky, hooved animals once ran in huge herds. They were the main food source and the spiritual focus of a people who lived there for thousands of years. The earth shook as they ran, and they played a central role in the balance of this grassland biome. The Great Plains are largely converted to farming today, and only a tiny fraction of the tall grass and short grass prairie remain today as it was then. Now, even less is the presence of the bison. A native herd still occupies the Yellowstone National Park, and at times, enlightened people have returned small numbers of bison to Indian reservations, a major spiritual event for the native people there. Let's learn more about these unique American mammals in this video clip. American bison, we call them buffalo, when I was a kid, I saw a buffalo on the back side of a nickel. I didn't know then that American bison are the largest terrestrial animal in North America, the bulls weighing in at 2,000 pounds and the mature cows weighing 1,000. The calves weigh a lot less, and they lack the woolly fur that keep the adults warm in winter. American bisons live in herds forming a circle to face threats. Their curved horns can kill a predator or a threat, including a person who gets too close. 
Bison in the wild can live from 12 to 20 years, but there aren't many living in the wild. The herd in Yellowstone National Park get to live that way, as they've lived since prehistoric times. A bison's hump is composed of muscle, enabling it to plow its head through snow. American bison were once countless on the Great Plains. They were a critical food source for Native Americans. The U.S. government practiced genocide against the Plains Indians by encouraging slaughter of the buffalo. Sadly, the policy achieved its shameful goal. Today, some bison have been returned to Native American land thanks to a change in policy and to the work of conservation groups. You're watching Ramping Up Your English. This is segment three of episode 52. Some genetically impure bison are raised for meat, uh, but the National Park Service has maintained that genetically pure herd for over 100 years. And thanks to the work of the American Bison Society, you can see bison in a number of zoos and wildlife parks. The video in the preceding clip was taken at Wildlife Safari in Winston, Oregon. Uh, they uh, are often visible also at Yellowstone National Park. A note to teachers about the sources we use in this program. The wildlife cards we so often consult are available by limited subscription. You get a few cards every month and over time you end up with eight binders like this one, this great big, this would be a tome if it was one book, okay? You end up with eight of these. And it takes two binders, just like this one, just to hold the cards on mammals. Another two for birds, and then the other four are for other animals and features like conservation and outstanding natural places. With a set like this, you can have each student research their own animal very easily, right, with that many cards. Now, these cards go by the name of Wildlife Explorer, which is a registered trademark. These are produced under license from International Masters Publishers. The biome chart I just displayed is from Enchanted Learning. Subscribers to this web-based resource gain access to a tremendous amount of resources for the classroom. The biome poster I used is from an organization called Teacher Created Materials, and the desert animal drawings are from the National Wildlife Federation. The book entitled Animals of the Tundra is part of a textbook package from the publisher Celebration Press. The Polar Animals Foldout book is from Flying Frog Publishers. The book of animals in the high country in the mountains is part of a set published by National Geographic. Contact information for all these resources will be posted on my website, letscreate.org, on the episode 52 page. Their use in this program is under the Fair Use Copyright Regulations. Whether you teach as a profession or in a different capacity, you'll find links to teaching materials used in any episode on my webpage of that episode at the same website as you saw earlier. And thank you for doing the great work you do. Thinking of work, we have a little more of that to do when we return.